Hello, good morning, everyone. Good morning. There are not many of us here today, but we know that wherever two or three are gathered in the name of Christ, we can be assured that God will be with us. And so today's chapel is Advent Chapel, and we hope that through the songs that we sing and the, the readings and scripture that we'll hear in a few minutes, uh, that we would tune ourselves to the season of Advent. And the season of Advent is this four-week season just prior to Christmas. It's a season uh, where there's uh, themes of expectancy and anticipation and waiting and longing for God's kingdom to come in its fullness, for things to be made right. Uh, This week I came across a reading by Reverend Heidi Newmark, and she says, The distance between the world as it is and the world as it should be tears at my heart. Probably the reason I love Advent so much is that it is a reflection of how I feel most of the time. I might not feel sorry during the season of Lent when the liturgical calendar begs repentance. I might not feel victorious even though it is Easter morning. I might not feel full of the Spirit even though it is Pentecost and the liturgy spins out fiery gusts of ecstasy. But during Advent, I am always in sync with the season. Advent unfailingly embraces and comprehends my reality. I think of the Spanish word and hello or longing. Advent is when the church can no longer contain its unbearable, unfilled desire and the cry of an hello bursts forth. Maranatha, come Lord Jesus, O come, O come, Emmanuel. And we see in Isaiah 2, the prophet, the prophet disrupts our present reality with a vision of God's future, and it reads, In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains, and shall be raised above the hills. All the nations shall stream to it. Many people shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. O house of Jacob, come, Let us walk in the light of the Lord. Isaiah says that in the days to come, nations will stream to the mountain of the Lord. They will beat swords into plowshares and spears into pruning hooks. And there we will learn war no more. God will teach us peace. And so today we will be singing uh, some familiar Christmas tunes, uh, Advent tunes, uh, be hearing from scripture and so I invite you in this space to respond as you feel comfortable if you want to sit and reflect if you want to sit and sing if you want to stand and sing feel free to do any of that but know that this space is available for you to respond however you feel led so let us wait upon the Lord that God may teach us the ways of peace from our feet. 
Why do you make me watch such wickedness? Disaster and violence, conflict and controversy are raging all around me. Your law is powerless to stop this. Injustice prevails. The depraved surround the innocent and justice is perverted. God says to Habakkuk, write down this vision, write it clearly on tablets so that anyone who reads it may run. For the vision points ahead to a time I have appointed it testifies regarding the end, and it will not lie. Even if there is a delay, wait for it. It is coming and will come without delay. So I wrote, look how pompous he is. Something is not right with his soul. He is not honest and just, but the righteous one will live by his faithfulness. Even if the fig tree does not blossom and there are no grapes on the vines, if the olive tree fails to give fruit, and the fields produce no fruit, if the flocks die far from the fold, and there are no cattle in the stalls, then I will still rejoice in the Eternal One. I will rejoice in the God who saves me. The Eternal Lord is my strength. He has made my feet like the feet of a deer. He allows me to walk on high places. People of God, Prophets like Habakkuk pointed to a future hope, a savior. No one knew when the savior would come. They only hoped they would recognize the Messiah, the Christ. So we wait with the hope for the one who has come. Continue to come and will come in his fullness. Let us sing together as we hope and long for God's preferred future. People of God, hope is coming. Jesus 
Jesus come and there will be justice. There will be justice. was the word and the word was with God and the word was God he was in the beginning with God all things came into being through him and without him not one thing came into being what has come into being in him was life and the life was with and the life was the light of all people the light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not overcome it and the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. People of God, Jesus is the image of the invisible God. God has revealed himself to us in the person of Jesus. In Jesus, we see that this God is a God of peace. Our world is not always a peaceful world. People hurt other people. Countries are at war. People don't take care of the world, but God promises peace. In John 14, Jesus says, Peace I leave with you. You may, may my peace I give to you. In times of war and hatred, it's hard to remember that Jesus is the one who brings peace. Today, we remember that Christ has come and has initiated his reign on peace, yet we wait for it to come in its fullness. May we live into the participate, anticipate God's peace, his gospel as peace. Stop. 
Here's my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen, and whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faith faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth and the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says God, the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open to the, the eyes that are blind to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. People of God, Isaiah promised a servant God who would come to save us. The Savior would be a light to the nations. Today, people everywhere are eager for justice, for restoration, for joy. Jesus says in Luke 4, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Today, we cry out and pray for God's peace, God's kingdom to reign, 
bid thou our sad divisions to cease. Pray together. We give you thanks for the babe born in violence. We give you thanks for the miracle of Bethlehem, born into the Jerusalem heritage. We do not understand why the innocents must be slaughtered. We know that your kingdom comes in violence and travail. Our time would be a good time for your kingdom to come because we have had enough of violence and travail. So we wait with eager longing and with enormous fear because your promises do not coincide with our favorite injustices. We pray for the coming of your kingdom on earth as it is around your heavenly throne. We are people grown weary of waiting. We dwell in the midst of cynical people and we have settled for what we cannot control. We do know that you hold initiative for our lives that your love planted our salvation before we saw the light of day. And so we wait for your coming and your vulnerable baby in whom all things are made new. And so we sing, O come, O come, Emmanuel.
for a benediction. May you go from this place knowing that God has come, that God promises to come again. So may you be empowered by the Spirit and the love of God to do the work that it takes for God's kingdom to come in its fullness. Go in peace. Amen.